What's up everybody? Captain Matt here. Today we're going to have another episode of Quickest Way to Catch a Bushel, which will go over tips, tricks, and tactics to maximize your catch. This is going to be a little one-on-one -on for today, uh, planning and preparing for your trip. I also have some big updates for the giveaways as I hit 200 subscribers this week, so stay tuned. First, a quick shout out to Mike Berry and Knight 33 Nurse. They were the two previous winners of the giveaways. Uh, Mike Berry selected the trailer lights and Knight Nurse selected the prop stick holder. So even a bigger shout out to Knight Nurse and all the other healthcare professionals that have put themselves at risk, keeping us healthy and trying to keep us safe through all this crazy pandemic we've been experiencing. My mom's a doctor, my sister's a nurse, so I kind of know firsthand all the craziness that goes along with being in those professions. And I just want to thank all the healthcare professionals that uh, have been putting in all those extra hours during this crazy times. All right, so on to the main topic, planning your trip. Step one is always figuring out when you can actually make it out in the water or what days you have available. And step two is cross comparing that to the weather. Um, depends on your rig and what kind of conditions you like to crab in. You have to make sure that the days that you want to go out obviously jive with the weather. So when it comes to weather, it's usually two things. It's whether it's going to, we're going to have any rain, precipitation, thunderstorms are nasty, and wind. And sometimes the wind and rain go together. Now what kind of conditions you prefer or can tolerate up to is going to be on you. But I'm just going to give you some rough general guidelines that I follow. In my rig here, I'm not overly concerned about rain. If they're calling for heavy, frequent thunderstorms all day long, I'm probably going to pass. I, you know, it gets a little dicey with all the lightning popping around. So if I'm crabbing in an area where I have quick access to a ramp and to get to my truck and I constantly hawk the radars on my phone and, and watching the weather, um, I might give it a go. But typically if they're calling for steady, heavy thunderstorms all day long, then I'm gonna bail. If it's just rain, that's not usually a big deal for me as long as it's not gonna be super windy with the rain. So for me, the bigger issue is gonna be wind. Now each and every person is going to be able to tolerate wind a little differently and it also depends on kind of where you plan on crabbing because you might be able to find shelter away from the wind. So for me personally, if it's up to 10, 15 miles an hour steady, maybe with gusts of 20, 25 miles an hour, that's about my limit, maybe a little more, it all depends. So here's a little tool I use, it's called Windfinder Pro. It's a mobile app, I think they have it on Android and iOS, not no sponsorship here, but it's a great little utility that someone turned me on to. So instead of checking like weather.com or weatherbug or any of your web favorite weather apps, um, if you do look at those and you select the day, it's gonna give you a range, but it really doesn't tell you how the day progresses as far as the wind goes. It's just gonna tell you this is the conditions for the day and it's gonna be anywhere between 10 and 15 and 20. So to maximize your opportunities on the water, you kinda of need to know what goes on throughout the day. If you're planning a real early morning trip, maybe the wind doesn't start picking up till afternoon. If you plan on doing an afternoon trip, maybe the wind is hard in the morning and then dies down in the afternoon. So Windfinder Pro is like a weather app, but it actually more focuses on wind instead of the weather. It'll show you a rough idea of temperatures throughout the day, but it doesn't get into great detail, but it's great for figuring out the winds. And the winds can be tricky because it, it may be at the beginning of your day, they're blowing from the north, and by the end of the day, they're blowing from the southwest, which can change quite a few things depending on where you want to crab. So this video here is going to be from my phone because I don't believe that Windfinder Pro has a website that shows you the same functionalities. So after you install it, you're going to want to look for your favorite weather reporting stations around the areas that you crab. And it doesn't have to be exact. There isn't one for every river. It just has to be close in general. So typically when I'm planning my trips for the week, my first thing I always do is open up Windfinder Pro and I click here and I click here. And you can see at the top, it shows me a readout for the next week, seven days. And it shows me a rough idea of what the winds are gonna look like each day. And it varies by every hour. So it'll show you as the hours go on what the expected winds are gonna be like. So like most weatherman and weather related apps, you know the forecasts aren't 100% accurate, but these are pretty close. It uses the same models and guidance as like say weather.com would use and they just convert it all primarily focused on wind. 
So you can see at the top here, you can see a readout for the week, and you can see anything when it gets into like the green, dark green is kind of where I start shying away from those days. Anything that's purple or, or light blues, they're usually fine. So here I can see that this day is actually pretty good, so I'm gonna drill down on that day. So it's gonna show me throughout the day what the winds are gonna look like and then what direction the winds are gonna come from, because that plays a huge factor if you're trying to hide from the wind, how you wanna lay your lines or run your traps. So the two locations I typically say would be Claiborne, which is kind of like a center point for Eastern Bay, like north, you know, up, up towards Kent and then Miles, Y and all the other creeks and then Northern Tillman. So Royal Oak is good at covering Chop Tank, Little Chop Tank, Tread, all these Southern Tillman Island type creeks. Like I said, it doesn't really have to be exact because that's more real time reporting based off of where you pick versus the forecasted, which is just based on computer models and satellite data and all that craziness. So if you click on the map, you can see as the hours progress and you control by using the slider at the bottom where the winds are and how strong they're going to be. So typically what I'll do is I'll go to a location where I plan on crabbing. Um, obviously if it's flat and there's very little wind, I don't really care where I'm going to lay. But if we're starting to get into the green where it's talking 20, 30 mile an hour winds, um, I need to hide. So I need to get up against land, protecting myself from the wind. And that's where this app comes in very handy. You can go to your locations and the certain spots that you're actually going to look for to try to lay in and you can see which way the wind's going to go. Overall, I love this app. I think it's either a one-time subscription. Um, well, I don't, it's not a monthly subscription. If I, I'll do some research and try to put some information down below. Um, there is a free version that doesn't have some of these features that I showed you. Um, you could probably get by without it. Um, I just like the app so much. I just wanted to support the company. Um, I really love using that app. Okay, so we got the days that we might be looking at to go out, and we also have the weather, how it corresponds with the days we're picking. Next up is tide. So generally speaking, tide isn't a huge factor, but it can play a huge role out on the water. So if you have multiple locations in mind, maybe tide's something you need to look at. And what I mean by that is having a good tide to start. So if you're doing a morning trip, you want the tide to just start running, either in or out. What you don't want to have happen, and again, this isn't the end of the world, but in optimal conditions, what you don't want to have happen is you get out at your legal start time, you lay your lines, maybe you get 30 minutes of moving tide and then it hits slack. A lot of people consider slack probably the worst time to crab. It's not saying you can't catch crabs, but usually the action seems to die down a little bit while the water's not moving. So under optimal conditions, you'd want, you know, when you lay your lines, you get a good three, four hour window while the tide is moving. So the other consideration when it comes to tide is maybe how you lay your equipment, either trot lines or traps. You know, if you know you're gonna be fighting the wind and you know you, instead of laying in your favorite lay a certain way, you might be altering your lay just because the way the wind is gonna be blowing and you maybe want shelter, you also have to factor in the tide. Now tide against wind usually causes some chop depending on where you're at and then tide with wind really gets the current ripping. It's usually flatter, but the current starts ripping more. So the tool I primarily use for tides is just a free website. I found it on the bluecrab.info forums. It's free. Um, there's two different links for the website. One's a desktop friendly version and one's more of a mobile friendly version. They both work, but just if you try to use the desktop version on the mobile, it acts a little funky sometimes. So here it is. I'll bring it up on my screen. Basically go down. You're going to select the area you want to crab in. You want to select the month, the day, and how many days of tide you want. Typically, I only select one day of tides, but if I know I'm going to crab for multiple days or multiple days in a week, I'll just pick them all up. So what I like to do is once I get this tide information, I'll take a snapshot of it on my phone and I'll just save it on my phone. That way, if I need to refer back to tide and tide information while I'm out in the water, I don't have to repunch in all this information. I just pulled up my pictures and there it is. The other way you get the screenshot can be used is for a catalog or diary, if you will, of your trips. I always keep snapshots of all my trips in the tide so I could tell what days I was crabbing and what locations I was crabbing in and then I could put two and two together and figure out if that was a good day or bad day. Usually GPS's and other weather apps, they'll all show tide and sometimes it's just not an easy read format. The thing I like about this website the most is just very plain. It tells me when high tide hits and when low tide hits. It also shows me 
sunrise, sunset, and moon information. Um, but most importantly, it's sunrise. Sunrise obviously determines when you can legally start laying your equipment if you're a recreational crabber or harvesting as a commercial crabber. Currently in Maryland, recreational folks can start right at sunrise and then the commercial folks will start one hour prior to sunrise. Now they can actually lay their equipment ahead of schedule but they can't start harvesting until legal start time, which is one hour before sunrise. The tide may or may not come into a factor when you're trying to plan your trip or actually choose a location. But to put two and two together, what I usually do is take my tide information and I know which way it's moving and when it's moving. And then I'll cross-reference that with going back to a screen within WindFinder Pro and then determining where the winds are. Now, all of this might sound a little overly complicated, and I really only get into the nitty gritty when I know I'm going to be fighting winds, weather, conditions, right? If it's nice and flat, low winds, uh, there's usually never a problem. I just go with where I think the crab is going to be best. So if I go back to my wind finder maps and I can see the wind is blowing one way and the current's another, and then I try to figure out where I want to lay and I put that information together. Now we have tide and we have the weather and you at least have one area you're considering crabbing and at this point you should make a decision of where you want to crab. If you're just getting started in your old hat, you're probably going to know where you want to lay your equipment. Maybe you have a little bit of intel and you know they say they're going to be in 8 to 10 feet. This is where my third app comes into. So I love Navionics maps and I'm going to go do a separate video on Navionics but I'll show you a little bit of how I use Navionics kind of to determine where I want to lay especially when I'm crabbing or exploring a new area. You don't have to know exactly where you want to lay if it's more of a casual trip but being successful and being a good crabber you always want to be prepared. You want to get to the ramp, launch your boat, be out in the water as soon as possible, get to your spot, claim your spot, lay your equipment out as quick as possible. Um, and then get to crabbing as quick as possible. One of the biggest sayings out there is I caught my lemon, I was back at the dock by eight and home by nine. You know, that's like an amazing day. That's a perfect day, right? To get to be that good, you have to know where you want to go. You have to be real quick about deploying your equipment. Doing some research ahead of time helps you get to that point. So here's the scenario. I'm going to be crabbing in a new river. I know the weather, I knew the tides. It's going to be windy that day, but I'm not sure where I need to lay to stay hidden from the wind. Someone gave me some intel and it's going to be 7 to 10 feet. I should, that's where my intel says the crabs are. I open up my Navionics maps and there's a cool feature down towards the bottom. I think it's under chart option. It's more geared towards fishing. But what it does is I can go down, I can punch a minimum depth in, and I can punch a maximum depth in. At that point, any of the temperature readings on the Navionics maps now become highlighted a certain color and you can pick the color. At that point I have a visual representation on my maps of where this target 7 to 10 feet is. So at this point on top of my weather data and my tide data and now my depth data and I know I need to hang out north against shore with maybe a tree line or something to kind of buffer some of the wind I'm going to be fighting. I can go search for an area that's highlighted in the special color that's sitting on a north bank. So I have the Navionics maps. I think there is a fee. I think it's a I don't know if it's a year. I think it's a yearly fee. I'll look that up again, try to put that down below. Um, I also use the Navionics chip in my GPS unit back there. Probably a lot of overkill, but I love having lots of information to refer to to try to find some good crabbing. So to summarize the beginning here, you know, we have our weather data, we have our wind data, we have our tide data, and then we know what we're looking for as far as depths go. Put all that together and put all those pieces of information together and you, you can put together a good idea of where you want to start now it's always good to have a couple different lays if you will um, on the river where you want to lay even if you're familiar with it you want to cover a couple different options because there's no guarantee that someone won't be out there ahead of you there's also no guarantee that there'll be crabs there crabs are notorious they'll be there one day you know someone catches bushel upon bushel upon bushel and then the next day they go out and it's still we need to know what time we need to begin so as i said before recreational crabbers can start at sunrise currently this does change once you get to october so we are in june middle of june so recreational crabbers can begin at sunrise and that's when they can start laying their equipment so I know my start time, I try to subtract how long it takes me to get to the ramps. I try to add in another half hour, hour, you know, add in time to uh, get your boat into the water, motor out to your area, um, and be in the starting position at the start of legal time. So just some other real more common sense type stuff. You want to be familiar with where you're going as far as launching your boat. You want to know how many parking spots there are and you want to know where the overflow parking is. Some of the ramps in Maryland, there's overflow parking. Typically, you can park up the street. Some of the ramps, there is no overflow parking. So all these things focused around being prepared and not surprised. Um, like I said, you know, if you want to take a casual trip, that's fine. Um, some of these things may or may not apply. Um, if you're 
becoming addicted to crabbing like myself or a hardcore crabber. If you want to become a hardcore crabber, um, I find continually how much time I waste over the years and you know why I still try to enjoy the trip and I do enjoy the trip. I think the most stressful part for me is just getting there, getting the boat in the water, getting the equipment out. Once that's in, then I can sit back and relax and hopefully I'm catching some crabs. Um, and then the next stressful part is just pulling the line back in. I get that good four, six, eight hour window, depending on how long I'm out there, and I get to enjoy that. Um, but I like to get to my spots, get my equipment in the water, and run that equipment as quickly as possible. If you're not catching crabs, the quicker you run it, the sooner you can tell that you're actually not catching crabs and it gives you more time to move. If you are catching crabs, you know, if you watch the commercial crabbers, they're just constantly run, 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 run. Um, typically, the morning's gonna be the best catch. Um, that doesn't say you can't do an afternoon troop and you can't catch crabs in the afternoon, but typically morning, I don't know if it's because it's dark and it's, you know you don't have as much sunlight, maybe the waters are cooler, the waters, black crabs come in and kind of replenish themselves since there's a break overnight and people aren't allowed to crab, but typically the morning is going to be the best and the more you can, quicker you can run it, the quicker you're going to get to your bushel. So several videos ago I announced that I would be doing some bigger giveaways once I hit certain subscriber marks and yesterday I hit 200 subscribers. Again, just want to say thanks to all of you that subscribed, and this contest is for you. So we're going to be playing a little game, trying to come up with some creative ideas and have some fun. Everyone likes to watch videos, crime videos, mostly where they look for landmarks and try to find people's spots. So we're going to play a game called Where's That Landmark? If you've watched all my other videos, I've named, I believe it's six different places that I've been to this year. So to be entered to win, I'm gonna show you this picture right here. And then you gotta leave a comment down below telling me which river, area, bay this landmark is located on. Even if you're not familiar with landmarks, but you've watched all my videos, you'll have a one in six chance of guessing right. So again, this picture here, so tell me what river, bay location this landmark is located on. Leave a comment down below and you'll be entered to win. So I'm going to let this contest run for probably about two weeks. Um, see how many comments I get down below. I'll do another video announcing the winner. You get to pick what you want of these cool prizes right here. And then it's going to take about another week or two for me to have it made and then get it shipped to you. Again, I'd just like to thank each and every one of you subscribed. And don't forget, for 300 subscribers, we're going to be doing a steamer giveaway. A keg converted to a steamer. If none of you have ever used a keg steamer before they are the best steamers out there i got the keg i got the materials i got the welder all lined up i just have to hit 300 subscribers so if you want to get to that giveaway sooner and you want to help support me just hit that like button and share on all your favorite social media networks i've been averaging about 100 subscribers a month so at the current pace is going to probably take about a month but with your help we could get it done sooner and until next time i'll catch you later